All right, let's get your virtual machine set up. First, any place I talk about the user John Doe with the ID J Doe, that should be your user ID. So you'll see that in a few places as we work through this uh, setup process. So go ahead and log in to one of the Linux machines and put your USB drive in one of the USB ports and type this command mount pipe grep media and you should see this message like we see here slash run slash media jdo mounted on dev sdf1 we're just verifying that the usb drive was spotted assuming that command is successful then you're ready to go ahead and create your virtual machine so start up virtual box so if you click on applications system tools and then select oracle vm virtual box that will launch the virtual box application from its main screen, choose the new option. This will create a new virtual machine. Use these settings. You're creating a Linux Fedora 64-bit. Name it with your user ID. And set its RAM to be 4096 megabytes. So that's four gigabyte machine. That should be sufficient for anything we're going to be doing in this class. And now we're going to create the actual virtual drive, the disk drive for this machine. So create a virtual disk drive. Click Create button. Its format should be VDI, that's the top option. Click Next. We're going to make it a fixed size so it's not trying to change size, which would really slow things down. And click Next. And now you're going to navigate down to the USB drive. So you're going to click Computer, choose the root directory, uh, scroll down and double click on the Run directory. Inside of Run, double click on the Media directory. Uh, and that lists the media uh, mounted on the machine. You should see a JDO directory, or you should see a U your user ID. Within that, you'll see your USB drive. It should be named similar to this with your uh, user ID. Double click on that. You should see a directory that's name matches your user ID. And then inside of that, an empty directory. That's where we're going to write the disk drive. Click the Save button. Set the size of your disk drive to be somewhere between 12 and 12.9 gigabytes. Just use the slider and it'll show you uh, legitimate options for your USB drive. Once that's done, you'll be back at the virtual uh, box manager. Click settings. We have to insert a virtual CD uh, that we can use to install the software. So click settings and from the settings page, click the storage option. You'll see the empty uh, CD drive. So click on that empty CD drive and then click on the CD icon over on the right and you're going to choose a virtual optical disk file. That's the menu option you're going to choose. Again you're going to navigate through to the uh, ISO file that we need. So click on computer, double click on the root directory, scroll down and find the students directory, uh, double click on that to go into students, go into the home directory, Scroll down to the MCS-apps directory, go into that, and access the MISC or miscellaneous directory. Inside of there, you'll find a dread directory. Double-click on that. And inside of there, you will find a VM images directory. Double-click on that and choose the Fedora Workstation ISO file and click the open button. So what you've done is you've placed a virtual CD into your virtual machine. Click that live CD checkbox as well and then click the OK button. We're now ready to start up our virtual machine. So click that start button and it will boot it from that virtual CD. All right, when you boot from that live CD, you're going to get the live CD menu. Make sure the upper option is chosen, so use that up arrow. Just make sure that it's highlighted to start Fedora Workstation and press the Enter key. You'll see a few messages scroll by on the screen as it boots up the operating system. And eventually, you'll be taken to the desktop. And since it's a live CD, it'll automatically bring us to this uh, application that lets us just install the operating system on our hard drive. So click Install the Hard Drive, which is actually your USB drive. That will start up the installation application. Choose the language. Please set it to English so we can all read it. And go ahead and click Continue. The only thing we have to worry about is the installation destination. Uh, in other words, how is it going to partition this disk drive? So click on that option. And it'll default to using the entire hard disk, which is what we want. There is an option to encrypt your data. That means encrypt the drive. Go ahead and check that if you'd like to use that feature. It means if anyone were to uh, obtain your USB drive, they wouldn't be able to read the data on it. And go ahead and click the Done option. Assuming you check that Encrypt option, you'll be asked for a passphrase to use to encrypt this disk drive. 
Uh, do not forget this passphrase. You cannot recover it, and in which case you would just have to recreate your virtual machine because uh, there's no way you'll be able to get back into it. And go ahead and enter the passphrase. Click Save Passphrase. It'll save that installation destination information, and the Begin Installation button will then uh, become available. Go ahead and click Begin Installation. That will start the process of installing all the software onto this virtual disk on your USB drive. You'll see a variety of messages uh, show up down there by that um, progress bar. Uh, it'll start to count through a percentage complete uh, from 0 to 100. And I'm going to skip through that just to speed up this process. Uh, that can easily take 10, 20 minutes, uh, depending on the speed of the USB drive that you are using. And as you get close to 100%, it's very exciting. Uh, note, though, that it sits at 100% for quite a while, much longer than any other percent. Uh, so have a little patience with that. I'm going to skip past that, and then you'll see the last few steps here, uh, which are setting up some of the uh, files that it needs to boot the machine. And eventually we're going to see it create what's called the initial RAM file system, which is used when it initially boots to set up uh, the file system in memory. So as soon as that completes, then we'll actually have the installation done, and in which case you're going to be able to exit out of this. So we'll give it a second. And it's wrapping up creation of that RAM file system, and you're now done with the installation. You can click the Quit button to get out of this application. And we're done using the live CD, so we're actually going to shut down the operating system. So go ahead and click that arrow that's in the upper right-hand corner, and click the icon that looks like a power button. And this is how you uh, shut down uh, the Fedora uh, virtual machine. You'll get an option to power off the machine in a moment. Go ahead and click that power off, and you'll see a few messages go by as it shuts down some services, and you'll be back to... Uh, the Oracle VirtualBox main screen. We've installed the operating system on our USB drive. Now we need to get rid of the live CD in our CD drive. So go back to Settings, choose Storage, and click on that Fedora Workstation Live uh, CD, Virtual CD. And click on the CD icon, and in that drop-down, you're now going to choose the option to remove disk from virtual drives. That gets rid of the CD. And click the OK button. And now what we're going to do is boot up our virtual machine, but this time it's going to boot from the installed operating system on the USB drive. So go ahead and click that Start button, and it'll go through the boot process. So as it boots, uh, you'll see it only has one... Uh, version of Fedora to boot from, so it'll default to that one. It'll start booting up. You'll see this little animated icon. Uh, if you chose the option to encrypt your disk drive, you'll need to enter the passphrase that you created, so you'd enter it at that point. Otherwise, it'll skip that step. It'll then go through the boot process, and you'll see this screen. Eventually, we'll see the Fedora icon show up there in the middle of the screen. And since we don't yet have any users, it can't ask us to log in. If you think about it, we haven't yet provided any credentials, any usernames or passwords. So the first thing that it's going to do is it's going to walk us through a process to set up our administrative user. So this is the desktop uh, of the system, and it's going to come up and welcome us. And you can click that Next button to start moving through the initialization process here. And so the first thing is to decide if you want location services turned on, do you want the system to know where you are, do you want it to send error messages back to Fedora, and then I'm going to skip the step of associating it with email accounts. So now we have to create our first user, who will be our administrative user. So put your name in there. It'll default to a username of first name, last name. You can change that to match our standard Linux naming convention if you want, first initial, last name. It doesn't actually matter. This is your own server, so you can have that username be anything you want. just can't have spaces in it. And then you're going to click Next and set a password for that user. And don't forget this password because it's the only user you have on the system. And click Next, and 
this, now it's going to actually put that user into the password file, which we'll cover later in the semester. And you can click Start using Fedora. So you now have a user. It's going to automatically log you in as that user since you just created it. And you'll be brought to the desktop for that user. This is the desktop for the new user you just created. I, it's going to bring up a help screen to just give you a little tour of how to use the user interface. Feel free to run these videos. They're very short. Each of those videos is maybe a minute long, if that. It just shows you how to interact with this desktop environment that Fedora uses. Uh, after you are done with that, you can click the X in the upper right corner. This screen will not appear again unless you specifically uh, bring up the Help option. All right, I just want to show you how to do a little bit of configuration or setup on this. So if you click on the activities link there at the upper left, that's how you uh, access icons for applications. That show applications option at the very bottom will show you every installed application, so every icon for the application. And then those little uh, dots over on the right-hand side are just ways to access pages. It, two of them means there's two pages. So click on the lower one and click on utilities. And I want you to right mouse click on Terminal and choose the option Add to Favorites. This will put it over on that uh, bar of icons that showed up over on the left. We're going to be using the Terminal a lot. It would be handy to have it available to us with one click. And I'm going to remove these icons that I don't have any use for at this point. So I'm going to right mouse click on that Email icon and choose Remove. And I'm going to do the same with this music uh, icon and then finally with the software icon. You can always get to these programs uh, by going into the All Applications option, but I don't need them uh, on this uh, uh, quick bar here. All right, so we've got basic machine set up. If you click on Terminal, you'll bring up a terminal prompt. We'll be using that a lot. We'll explore that later on. For now, you can just type Exit to get out of it. And we're going to shut down this virtual machine. We want to do one more test, and that is prove that our user is working correctly. So upper right, click the down arrow, click that power icon, and click power off, or power down, and it'll shut down the virtual machine. Okay, so for our last test, I just want to boot up now that we've created a user. So go ahead and click that Start button again on VirtualBox. Again, if you set a passphrase on your disk, you'll need to enter that here to decrypt the disk. It'll then boot up, and you should this time not be brought directly to a desktop, but you should be brought to a login screen. There's only one user, so it's going to just show us that one username. Uh, if there were multiple users, we could either choose a username, type it in, or look at find it in this list. So there we should see the user you created, and you can either click on that user or you can press the Enter key, which point it will ask you for the password for that user. Go ahead and enter the password that you set for the user, and you can click the Sign In button or just press the Enter key, and you'll be logged in. And this will take you to the desktop, this is the exact same desktop we just looked at a couple minutes ago. And I'm going to show you one more thing, uh, just if you want to do a little bit of configuration of this environment, uh, a little personalization. Uh, that's pretty straightforward to do. So on the desktop, we've used that, uh, we've clicked in the upper right to shut the machine down, but also if you click in the upper right, you'll notice that there's a little icon that looks like tools, and that lets you set some configuration options for the user interface and for the server as well. So go ahead and click that tools icon, and that will take us to a configuration application. And if you look at the list of settings, uh, background is used to do exactly that, change the background image. So if you put a picture on your server and you want to change your background image to match that, you can do it from there. If you want to change the privacy options, a screen lock, for instance, decides whether or not when the screen blanks out, whether you'll have to re-enter your password when you come back to the machine. If screen lock is on, then you will have to re-enter your password. Uh, power is where you can configure things like how long before the screen will blank out, uh, will it go into power saving mode for Wi-Fi if your battery's low, things like that. Feel free to explore all these. You can't really do much harm to the system uh, with these, uh, and you'll find that they're pretty much the same kind of options you have with Windows or iOS. 
Okay, so we can shut this down again, choose upper right hand corner, uh, choose that power button, choose the power off, and you'll be back to the VirtualBox main screen. So once it's shut down, the only thing that you really need to remember is to unmount your USB drive the way we covered in class. If you don't, you will probably corrupt this installation and you'll have to redo it. But congratulations, you've got a virtual machine, you've got your own server you can start to administer, and uh, as we work through the concepts in class, this will be an environment where you can actually try it out.